Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Easy Crochet Pet Bed. You know, for cats, dogs, or anybody that you'd like to kick off your bed or the sofa and have them sleep on the floor. Today we're going to be working on this pet bed. We're going to be using Bernat Blanket Pet. Let me talk to you, talk to you a little bit about this. The top side and the bottom side, they're exactly the same pattern and then they're brought together to form that with the pillow form that you can get, that you can slide inside. So the yarn of choice today is Bernat Blanket Pet Yarn and this has been treated with probiotic formula. It's with the Everfresh technology and then it helps reduce the down the odors and naturally controls that. So if you go to sniff your balls um, you will notice that there is no odor to it and there it's completely color colorless as well. So what we have is that we have two examples and what this is is a very large granny squares in order to do this. So there's a total of two of them and you can go as big or as little as you want. So you know this would be too big for my cat. So I would consider doing even a smaller size pillow form and then you just grow this to the, the size that you want and then do two of them and then turn them so that the front sides are up so the right side is facing up. You will notice that there's a different difference and then you will just put them together. Now with the buttons here on the top I came up with an idea that I think would be a little more helpful. So what I decided to do is that you can have buttons that go down that attach the face but I would consider this if and this is alternative advice because I know somebody's gonna make a comment about a dog choking on a, on a button. What you can do is do round number one all over again. Do two of those and then what you can just do is put them on top of that and sew those directly down through to the bottom to the other side. So put one on the top, one on the bottom and then use that as, uh, that as an extra kind of like a securing for the middle. So completely your choice. You can go for the button or that. I did that kind of concept for my cats. Um, you know peace of mind. It's up to you. It's your creativity. You can decide what works for you. So without further ado I'm going to show you how to start the square and then we're going to, you're going to finish off to the size that you want and then I'll show you how to put two together as well. Let's begin. We're going to make two pillow faces. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. This will be the part of our center and we need to chain a total of four to get ourselves started. You'll do two pillow faces like this. So chain four. So one, two, three and four. Now insert your hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling through and through and that is the starting ring of your whole idea. Now I want you to take the straggler and put it around the outside of that ring like it's part of it so it'll get trapped and then in uh, row round number one. Let's begin round number one now. So in round number one we're going to start off with the complete circle first and then transition into a square then in round number two. Let's begin. You're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and you need to put 15 more double crochets into the center ring. So wrap in the hook going into the center ring, pull through, pull through two and two and keep doing that so that you have a total of 16. So with the chain three that you started with plus these 15 it gives you a total of 16. So I'm going to count out loud with you. So I'm gonna include that first chain three. So one, two, three, four and then we'll say it's five, six, Noticing that I'm going right over top of that straggler. This is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I'm running out of space in the center, but because you're going around the center, just kind of pull on it and it will open up more space. So we have twelve in there. We have thirteen. 14, 15 and 16. Once you have your 16 on there you should verify it before you go any further. So just count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now just insert your hook into the top of the first chain 3 and then pull through and through and now you have your 16 all the way around. Let's m now move along to round number two. So round number two we're going to chain a total of five. So that'll count as one double crochet and chain two. So let's just start. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet, four, five, that's your chain two. In the same one that you have uh, joined those two I want you to place in two more double crochet. So a portion of the first 
corner has now been done and you're gonna finish that corner with a double crochet in the same spot when you get back there. The next three in a row are each going to be one double crochet. So let's count those out. So one, two, and three. And now we're gonna make a new corner in the next one. So in the next stitch I want you to put in two double crochet first followed by chain two and two double crochet. That's all in the same stitch and there is your next corner. So the next three in a row are each going to be one double crochet. And then the next one after that will be then a new corner. So it's gonna be two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. The nice thing about it is that these corners will always be the same as far as the counts when you're doing those except for the beginning one that will always be special. So now the next three in a row are each one double crochet. Okay, now you're hitting another corner so you gotta make it first. So ch two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And then their final chain uh, three double crochets left to get back to the first corner. So one, two, and three. But you're not done this final corner yet. Right where this is all sitting into place you're going to place in one more double crochet there into that same one and then finish it. So join it to the uh, third chain up of the chain five. So make sure you don't lose the whole idea of it being square. So now what we can just do is grow this square out now evenly now throughout the rest. So you'll notice third round it says continue the third round until it hits 36 inches. So you just have to start off the same way. So you're going to slip stitch to the chain two space. So just through and through and then chain five. So one, two, three that's your first double crochet. Four, five is a chain two and then you're gonna put two more double crochets in that same space. So it's kinda like you did before but this time there's more of a space there. Each one of these double crochets that are in there in between the corners are each gonna get one double crochet. So you don't hear me counting because I'm just looking for the stitches. And I'm just doing that all the way to the next corner. So the rest of the corners are each gonna be the, like you did before. This time you can see it's a physical corner because before it was a round circle. So it'll be two double crochet Chain two, two double crochet. Drop my yarn, sorry. And then you continue to working around, so filling in the rest of the um, stitches then with the double crochet over top. So you're just gonna continue to go around and around and around as big as you wanna go and again it would be 36 inches is too big for my cat. So you look at the average size pillow forms that you can find at the store if you want or if you wanna use your own polyfill it's completely up to you. I find a pillow form kinda holds itself together better. Um, but again this is your creativity, your project, you decide what's right for you. Corners always be the same, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And then just keep on filling. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave it for you to get as big as that you need to go. I'm gonna quickly review on how to restart a new round just to make sure that you slip stitch to the first chain two space as you begin and then in the next portion I'm going to show you how to put the two together, uh, the two sides together. You'll need a pillow form for that before you do it. You can also just put two together too without a pillow form and just have an extra thick mat too for the floor if you wanted to. I think my cats would like that too. So I think that's something that you can decide that works for you best. So as you get all the way back around remember that you have the first square or the first corner already partially done. You just gotta finish it. Okay so here's where I was. So you wanna fill in with one double crochet into the same space and then join it to the third chain up of the chain five. 
So that would be how you would do that. So you can just go as big as you need to go to start the next round. You have to slip stitch first and then begin chain five, two double crochets in and then continue to ro rotate around. But for those that would like to see how they're put together what you can just do is that you'll do two of them and then you will put them together. So I'll show you how to do that next. So let's just say I did the second one and I already have the first one already par uh, partially done to the same size. So you can do it any size you want. I want you to turn up. This is the good side that you're looking at the right side but if you look at the other side you can see that it doesn't look as clean. Okay, so it doesn't look as defined in stitches. So you can see that there's a definite difference. You wanna get rid of any of your loose ends. If you hid them in properly then you should just be able to trim those out. Just use a tapestry needle if you have to. And then once you're ready you're gonna put the two faces together. So with, in order to do that you have to turn the back one upside down. So the wrong side is up and then you have to look at the good side of this one here. So if you turn it around like this there's the good side, there's the good side. So all you're just going to do is that you're in the top of the first stitch here and that you're just gonna go through it and then get the first one over here. And what you're going to do is just join them together with a single crochet. So in the corners what I would do for if I were you is that I would just put two double crochets in the corner or two single crochets in the corner and then move along. So in the next stitch a single crochet, match it to the other one and what you wanna do is almost like an envelope get three sides complete and then you're going to slide in your pillow form then and then go along the final side with it already in the inside. You can then ultimately then put a button on the front of it to pull the pull the center down. You can leave it unbuttoned but I would be I'd be kind of recommending that circle idea I talked to you in the beginning. Just do round number one, just do it twice, put it on top and then just sew that uh, the two rounds together at the, at the there and there you, therefore you don't have any buttons. Um, you know your dog better than anybody as far as like chewing things. Um, my cat has actually just learned how to chew crochet hooks. <laughs> it's not making my day by any better I'll tell you. But uh, you never know and uh, if that's something that's gonna be, gonna be cautious to you. I know that people will leave comments here in the video that there is a button used and a pet is involved. Um, but you know there's buttons on our furniture and everything and the cats seem to leave them alone but you never know. So you're just in the corners. I would just put two single crochets and keep on moving around. So what you're just doing is attaching it as you go. So that's how you would attach these and then just slide in your pillow form once you have all three sides. You slide it in and then just finish the final side continuing along and then just weave in your ends. So this would be how you would do um, a dog uh, pet bed. Um, just the two thicknesses alone would be an ideal for our cat for uh, a padding as well. So you can make that decision and that's it for now. So it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is a great little pet bed idea and hopefully that you will enjoy it too. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.